Hello, I'm the Dad, and today I'm going to show you how to install Homebrews on the PS Vita version 3.50 and below. At first, I'm going to use this new fancy menu, which is called One Menu. It was made by GDLJJRod. I'm not sure if this is how to properly pronounce his name. If not, I'm sorry if it is. Okay. But, so yeah, at first you're going to need this link, I will put it in the description of the video, and then you can go ahead like I'm going to do now. First you have to scroll down and download the one menu version 2. Just going to download it. Then after I downloaded it, I can use these files to install Homebrews on the version 3.50. If you're using a PS Vita running a version 3.50, then you know that you are not able to install Homebrews into the game folder. And if you want to use TNV, that's the one with the PSP menu on the PlayStation Vita, then you kind of have to put things in the game folder, otherwise it will not show. But we have a little solution for this. And if you use the one menu, you can still install homebrews on the PS Vita and you can still access them from within TNV even though you cannot access them from the XMB. Okay, at first you need to find your PS Vita folder on your computer. At mine it's just z slash document slash PS Vita or libraries documents PS Vita something like that will be by on your computer two <coughs> then we go into the safe data folder then in the folder with the weird numbers and letters which is your account id i guess and then you need the folder of your exploit game so if you use the world of pool exploit game it should be something like ules whatever and if you use the pool hole pro exploit game it will be something else my exploit folder is tnv underscore one two three four five and in there you have some files which are something like icon0, per, param sfo, tn.bin and flash0.tn. If you have these files in your safe data folder then you're kinda sure that this is the folder we need. But okay, then I'm going to open one menu, the file we just downloaded, and then we mark all these files and then we copy them into the folder we have to. If it asks to overwrite some files, just say yes, it's not important, it's not a problem. And as you can see, it contains a vboot.pbp file. This is now also in this folder, vboot.pbp, but we have to rename it. It has to be called recovery. So if the file is called recovery.pbp, then we're kind of done with this folder. And the next step is simply we want to install some homebrews like this Super Nintendo, no, just Nintendo emulator, NES emulator, which is called Nestor J. Then I have this folder which is called test homebrews. In there I have a few homebrews like Checker, Nestor J, Pixar Dumper, PS Plora, and Yama IRC. Um, you have to make sure that the files are called fboot.pbp and not eboot.pbp also fboot also fboot also fboot and I have to rename this to fboot okay as you can see we have this Super Nintendo emulator which is a homebrew as you can see eboot.pbp and so on and then we just drag and drop the folder into this folder then we're going to verify eboot has to rename to be fboot. Okay, then we're going to create a zip file, but before we create a zip file we're going to create a new folder and call it PSP. Then inside we create a new folder and call it game. No, that's wrong. VHBL. We can't use game since game is blocked as of version PS Vita version 3.50. So we're using the name VHBL. Then we are copying all these folder in here, so we have the structure PSP, VHBL, then the homebrew folder and then the homebrew files. This is the structure PSP, VHBL, another folder and the homebrew files. Once again all these files have to be, all the eboot.pbp files have to be called fboot. And if we have this we are going to right click the PSP folder and then we are creating a zip file. For my example I am using WinRAR. 
and I'm going to call this 350 TST dot zip whatever I think test would be too long now I have this zip file which is around 8 MB and I'm going to copy it into the same folder we have our TNV files so in my example it's the TNV12345 folder if you did all of these things you have to connect your firmware 3.50 PS Vita with your computer and if you cannot connect your PS Vita with your computer because the most recent version is 3.51 and you are only on version 3.50 then you could install QCMA as you can see QCMA was made by CodeStation and QCMA can enable you to transfer files to an older PS Vita firmware so in this example as you can see CMA protocol selection you can change this to manual so you can change the firmware for example 3.1 whatever so you can connect your 3.10 12 15 18 20 piece video with the computer and successfully transfer files you can also choose the 3.30 second 3.30 setting and then you can can connect with firmware 3.30 35 36 and so on and you can also choose latest then it's going to spoof the version which your PS Vita has as the latest and you should be able to use QCMA and your computer with your 3.50 PlayStation Vita I'm putting this on latest because my PS Vita is running version 3.50 but you could also change it to manual and 3.30 since 3.30 to 3.50 is the very same version as you can see 1.9 whatever it's not important just just set it to latest or 3.30 if your device is running 3.30 on your okay um, while installing QMCMA, QCMA if you're using QCMA and you change something in your PS Vita folder for example PS Vita save data whatever TNV then you have to right click um, QCMA and refresh the database Usually this is done by itself, so you don't have to do it, but if you use QCMA instead of the default CMA, then you have to manually refresh the database if you touch files instead of your PS Vita folder. But since this is now done... Okay, on the PS Vita we at first connect the PlayStation Vita to the computer via the USB cable. Then we go into the Content Manager application and transfer content. If you did everything right you should be able to transfer content despite being on a lower firmware. Then we select PC to this system. Then we go into the folder and look for the one menu icon. And as you can see it's the same save data folder which I use on the computer, the TNV12345 folder. Then I press on copy. Oops. Press on copy. Okay and then it's copying the folder onto the PlayStation Vita. And after this is done, I'm showing you how to use TNV and how to install the homebrews. Okay, now we leave the content manager application and start our TNV. For me, I have this fancy bubble which I can use to start TNV, but you most likely have to use Pool Hall Pro, World of Pools, or Ape Escape on the loose. Inside of TNV, we usually have the, web, the function that we can use game and then select the memory stick, and then we should see our games and homebrews and so on. As of Farmer 3.50, this is not possible anymore because Sony blocked the access to the slash PSP slash game folder which is necessary for installing homebrews as PSP filer or this GBC emulator. But everything that you have put into the PSP slash game folder will stay in there but if you delete this you cannot re-add it. So what's gone is gone. The only things you can re-add are ISO games like for example this GTA or these Japanese games. So how are we going to use one menu to install homebrews on the PS Vita so we can actually 
use these homebrews. Like the game folder access is blocked. The funny thing is we can just go into the recovery menu, we press select and go to TN recovery menu. Then we have a function which is called run program at and this function will start a file which is called recovery.pvp like the file we have on the computer and then transfer it on the place of Nvidia. And this file is located in the tnv underscore 12345 folder which we also had on our computer and which we also transferred from our computer on our PlayStation Vita. So I'm just going to click on this function and this will now load the one menu. This is one menu. It's currently scanning the ISO and the PSP game folder, but we want that this menu does a bit more. So we press triangle and then we have scan saves so you can find our zip file. Yes. Scan VHBL so it can find the homebrews installed into the VHB folder. Yes, scan categories, not necessary, but if you want to, you can just enable it. And another nice function is so show picks. You can also enable this. Then we go over restart and press X. This will restart one menu, and after one menu has restarted, it's now also scanning saves and the VHBL folder. And since I enabled the pics function, I will get this fancy, these fancy background images of games, for example, of these Project Diva games, or Kion, and so on. And if you use up and down, you can switch between the modes. For example, homebrews, games, this includes PSP games, PSN games, and ISOs. And the third mode is PS1 games. If you have zip files and if you have enabled the scan saves function, you can also have a fourth menu which is called zip file. And there we have our 350tst.zip file which we have created on our computer. And if we press X on it in the top right, as you can see, it would install these on the memory stick. And you can see the remaining free space which is currently around 35.5 gigabyte because I have a 64 GB memory card in this PlayStation Vita. Okay, I'm going to press X and now it's installing all the files. If you used the correct folder structure, like I showcased on the computer, which was slash PSP, slash VHBL, slash, and then you put the homebrews in there, so you have an additional folder, and inside of these additional folders, you have the homebrew files, for example, these fboot files just like I showed you on the computer. Now it's currently installing all of the files, for example the NES emulator and those other test homebrews and these NES ROMs, for example the Mario games and Tetris and so on. So if this is done, it should return to the menu and it does. If we now use the up and down keys we can go to homebrews and it should now list our homebrews. If you use L and R, you can switch very fast through these homebrews. And if you use the left and right buttons, you can select one after each other. One after each other. Okay. I have a lot of PSP filers in here. As you can see, Yama IRC is installed, but for whatever reason, the others are not showing. So I'm just going to restart the menu and then it's checking all the folders again and the saves and so on and if I now check the homebrews it should list all these things I just installed for example the NES emulators there we go, Nestor J, New PSR Dumper, PS Plora, Yama IRC and so on, all the stuff I just installed let's just launch Nestor J if I click X on it, I'm going to launch the homebrew in this menu. Let's see, config failed, whatever. I just want default config anyways. And then we can load Super Mario Bros. and NES game. And it even runs through 60 FPS. So yeah.
for example. So yeah, if you want to exit the home rules, you can just use the exit function which is built in in TNV. By default it's start plus select, but if you changed it like I do, you can just quit the game. While you cannot add new games into this game memory stick function category, then you can still use the recovery menu and then the one menu. It's not the best solution, but it's a working solution and that way you can add re add or re-add or renew new emulators on your PlayStation Vita even if you're running version 3.50. Because prior to these menus you had to transform homebrews into the ISO format, so you can easily add ISOs. But some homebrews, when transformed into the ISO format, like these PSP games, had a lot of problems. So sticking to the familiar .pvp format is a better solution. So if you want to install homebrews on the version 3.50, I would recommend just to use one menu, since it's an easy and fast solution to simply add homebrews onto your PS Vita even though it's not in the game folder and therefore not in the game category, but you can just use one menu. I'm the Dad and see you soon.